Welcome to the show. It's On Course with Bristol Community College. A show that takes you inside BCC, the South Coast's home for higher education. With your host, BCC Marketing and New Media Specialist, Patrick Stone. Good afternoon and welcome to On Course with Bristol Community College, the radio show that tells the untold, unheard, and unknown stories about Bristol Community College. I am your host today, Kevin Spurlett, Media Specialist at Bristol Community College. Instead of my usual compatriot, I'm joined today by Vice President of College Communications, Sally Cameron. Hello, Sally. How are you today? Hello, Kevin. Nice to be here. We have a great show today and I'm really excited about it. But, Kevin, where is Patrick? Well, Patrick is making the the big leap this week. He is getting married um, to a, a wonderful girl. So we, uh, Sally and I, will both be at the wedding and are wishing them all the best and all all our love to them. So um, good luck, Patrick, and remember to breathe. We are here every week, and you can always hear our show live on WSAR on Mondays at one o'clock, or you can download the podcasts found on WSAR.com, and you can also like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash BCC to add comments or request a topic that you'd like to hear more about. So on for on to today's show. We have a very special show to you today. We have a full studio today. We have uh, a whopping four four guests in the studio today, and today we're going to be telling you the story of the museum fabrication at the Fall River Children's Museum that um, our local BCC students were involved in, and it's just been a tremendous project, and Sally, I know you're excited about this as well. Yeah, this is great, and uh, it, it's such a great opportunity for our students to be involved in something very real and very practical. Uh, so I want to introduce our guests first. Uh, the executive director of the Fall River Children's Museum, the brand new, wonderful opportunity that we have in Fall River to have a, our own children's museum, Joanne Spraga. Hello, Sally. And uh, usually when we have a Spraga on the the show, it's my boss, President Spraga. In this case, we have President Spraga, but not of Bristol Community College. So, welcome, Joanne. Thank you, Sally. And we have Eric Durand, who is the uh, assistant professor of art, of fine arts at Bristol Community College and the coordinator of the fine arts program. Hello. And we also have two students with us, which uh, I told them beca- before we started the show that uh, we really love having students on, so we're so glad that they're here. Kelly Gagnon. Hello. <laughs> and Jennifer Moore. Hello. Both of them are graduating this year, and they are involved in the project at the Fall River Children's Museum. Uh, so let's start with you, Joanne. Uh, certainly we're here to talk about the museum, uh, and you are not a, you did not study how to be a museum director. Uh, I wonder if you'd tell us a little bit about your background and how you found yourself at the helm of the Children's Museum. Okay, Sally, thank you. Uh, I am an early childhood educator uh, by training. I've spent uh, 40 years uh, working with young children uh, in many capacities as a classroom teacher, um, teaching adult ed, and um, also owner and director of my own small school in Rhode Island uh, for 22 years, uh, commuting almost two hours a day. Um, this project was near and dear to my heart uh, when we moved to Rhode Island in 2000, I'm sorry, from Rhode Island in 2000 to here in Fall River. Um, a children's museum uh, board had been established and at the present time, at that time, Ray Gordon was the executive director uh, that started this project in 1999 in, in Fall River. A few years later, um, I became aware of the project and was asked to join the board of directors. Um, at that point, we were what we called a museum without walls, and we went out into the community, we wrote grants, and we looked for other venues to collaborate with. Uh, some of the most popular ones we did uh, were collaborating with the Boys and Girls Club. We did uh, a photography class we called Fall River as I See It and uh, bought 25 digital cameras, and the students went out to the community, took pictures of Fall River the way they saw it. Um, they were then given a, um, a show, uh, Kathleen Hancock, 
um, worked with us, and uh, they were actually given their own show at Bristol Community College, which was just a wonderful experience to see these kids. Now their artwork hangs in the Children's Museum, so it, it's great fun to see. Naturally, BCC, Kitty College, uh, and also the Narrow Center for the Arts were some of our biggest collaborators over the years. So you were a museum without walls, which means that you had exhibits and you would take them different places. So now you have a facility, an actual building that is just an amazing facility. It is. Can you tell us, first of all, where it is for Mm -hmm. the listeners who don't know? Uh, And briefly, can you tell us how that ended up happening? Sure. The location is in Fall River at 441 North Main Street, what is oftentimes called the Superior Court Building. Some folks still think it's Superior Court. <laughs> the students and Eric can attest to how many people we redirect on a daily basis. Uh, but um, it's a grand old building built in the late 1800s, um, owned by the county of Bristol County, um, who have kept the building in impeccable shape. Um, I have to give a shout out to Richie Pires and his crew. Uh, they have just done an amazing, uh, when we walked in that building for the first time, to see ladders still out and touching up paint and just the great love and care that they took of this building has made our job so much easier to go in and we didn't have to worry about um, environmental concerns um, and uh, it was just uh, you know great to see uh, that kind of love and the, and the structure is just incredible um, so we were looking for a building and um, the commissioners had uh, put a notice in the paper saying they were looking for a nonprofit. Um, they wanted it to have public use. Uh, they only wanted one tenant. Um, they had had some offers in the past, but it was for a wing, and they certainly didn't want to be landlord to ten different tenants. Um, so we fit the main criteria. And uh, so we began a conversation with John Mitchell, that's our local commissioner, and he took it to the commissioners. And as of January 2012, we started uh, with a signed lease and started paying uh, monthly rent. And uh, we were able to go in immediately and start thinking and working on our master plan and our renovations. So the master plan is, was a professional architect who came in and looked at your space and helped you think about some of the uh, exhibits you'd have, what so- sort of resources you would offer. Yes. And this is where Eric comes in. Absolutely. So I wonder uh, if you and Eric could talk a little bit about how this collaboration then happened, and I will give our listeners a hint. Part of it has something to do with Eric loving dinosaurs. <laughs> that is yes, true. I, I, I will admit I, I, I do love dinosaurs. So. <laughs> Paleontologist was a you know a second career option. Uh, sculpture Fine didn't art. Work out. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, maybe there's an intersection. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I got started working on this project. Uh, I was at a, a meeting of many meetings that people in academia go to, and uh, uh, there was an announcement that uh, that the Fall River Children's Museum um, had finally had got a building and that they were going to begin um, fabricating exhibits. And I remember sitting in this meeting, and my hand sort of just flew up in the air <laughs> automatically, and I all without even thinking was blurting out, "If you guys are doing exhibit design, I need my fabric uh, my sculpture studio." here at BCC involved in that and uh, within probably a month or so um, I was at a meeting with uh, the committee for the Children's Museum getting in you know getting involved saying I want to do this Um, so that was how that was how quickly I think (laughs) things actually really happened Um, now, Joanne, you had a relationship with Eric already. You and he had yes, Eric, been... Yes, Eric, yes. We had, we collaborated a few years ago. Um, I used to run a, an event called Under One Tent. Um, it was graduation weekend uh, when I was president of the symphony and president of the Children's Museum. Um, we had put this um, arts group together for many different groups to get together under one tent, and we involved the art clubs at that point and Eric had come forward at that point and we began conversations because I was involved in the art community in Fall River and Eric in New Bedford and we began talking and thinking of ways that Eric could make some connections in the Fall River art community and so we had you know begun our conversations back then. 
So, Eric, we're going to talk to you and bring the students in in a little while about why that was a critical um, opportunity for your students and why you you embrace that so much. But um, I wondered, Joanne, if you would describe to the listeners what we are talking about exactly. What did the mm-hmm. students do? Sure. And where did it come from, mm-hmm. okay. from the master plan? Sure. Well, the... Uh the design architect uh, by the name of Bill Greaves from Virginia Beach, Virginia, designs children's museums around the country. He has done 27 children's museums. Um, we, when we first met with Bill, <coughs> excuse me, and brought him to Fall River to see the building <coughs> and give his nod on the building, um, we already conceptually had some ideas for the rooms and. I, at the time, had one grandson by the name of Johnny that was three at the time that loved dinosaurs. And I created Dino Island for his birthday party. And um, that's where kind of the dinosaur idea came from. And so um, we took it to Bill as uh, an idea for for one of the rooms. And um, so Bill did, um, his renderings were all done on the computer. And they're magnificent drawings, um, but they're computerized. Um, And we brought Eric in to meet Bill on one of Bill's trips. And instinctively, Eric knew from our conversations that he wanted the dino room, that that was going to be his project. I even think that though. was actually one of my stipulations yeah. when I got to do something <laughs> there with were, dinosaurs. There were nine <laughs> rooms to do, but we, we knew that Eric was going to do there. the dinosaur <laughs> room. And um, so that's how it began. And now the uh, the architect, um, the dollar amount uh, was just phenomenal for what it was going to cost to do this room um, by a national design fabricator. The shipping prices alone are just incredible. And uh, so a room to this stature probably wouldn't have been done for another couple of years if we didn't have Eric and, and the students' involvement. And uh, so, you know, that's how much it's meant to us, um, just that um, to see um, this room. And uh, when we look, when I look to some of my business advisors, and we look at, you know, how little we have actually spent in actual dollars to get the door open is incredible. And that wouldn't be happening without the collaborations that we have. That's amazing. Spectacular. Yeah. So uh, the the sculpture students are not the only ones who have participated in this. Uh, we'll, we'll have the graphic design students yes, on absolutely. in the next month or so, but uh, this has been a twofer project. Two groups of students at the college, uh, led by their faculty members, have been able to do something very practical and artistic absolutely. in the museum. And we've had other uh, professors come forward and volunteer their time uh, in the art department as well uh, that have just you know, the goodness of their heart come and help me out with some other projects and uh, so it's it's just been marvelous to see uh, the collaboration that's been going on well if you've ever been in this building uh, when it was a superior court uh, we won't go into why that might be but if you go into this building it is 12 foot ceilings yes. with with uh, eight-foot windows and gorgeous, gorgeous uh, uh, woodwork and flooring and doors that are Mm custom-made. It's just a stunning building, and I can attest that it's still a stunning building. Even though it's a children's museum, there's nothing at all uh, childlike about it. It's it's a very elegant, wonderful building. And that's something consciously, you know, we're, we're keeping to. I really feel, and I was just quoted in the paper yesterday or today's article about that, um, that I think children can learn about history, um, and architecture. And I think there's something to be said for that. So we certainly have kept the integrity of the building. So, uh, in this section, we're gonna, we're gonna speak to Eric a little bit. So Eric, um, 
Tell us a little bit about about your background. Um, actually, before I knew who Eric was, I was very familiar with your um, s- with your squid s- sculpture over at the uh, New Bedford Whaling Museum. It's part so. of the reason why I'm doing this museum fabrication thing is so I'm not the squid guy anymore. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> well, it's an excellent sculpture, and it's it, it's almost become very like a part of much a part of downtown. It's almost like a very much a part of the downtown landscape. So the uh, the the giant squid on the Whaling Museum was uh, um, was a great opportunity. To to get some work out, and um, I joke about being the squid guy, but honestly, I love that. So. He's a dinosaur guy <laughs> now, so you know. Uh, in terms of uh, my background, uh, I've been uh, I've been a, a serious artist for probably about fifteen or maybe more years uh, working. Um, I've been in New Bedford for I think twelve. And where are you originally from? Uh, I'm from New Haven, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, I went to I did my undergraduate work at Southern Connecticut State, and uh, and then I moved to New Bedford to go to UMass, uh, UMass Dartmouth, um, uh, and study at the Star Store. So I studied sculpture there and got my MFA. And there's so much there's so much going on in the New Bedford and Fall River area as far as you know, like a, a, a very much a burgeoning art scene that you must. You must be happy with the way that things. Absolutely, and I've I've witnessed it firsthand. Um, having moved here uh, in 2001, uh, when things were just starting to get off the ground, not that there wasn't already an art scene there, but um, so much has happened in the past 10 years, as you know, many many people can attest to. And uh, it's been it's been pretty exciting to be part of that and yeah. you know, to be involved. And uh, I've done open studios for. Um, as long as it's been around, uh, and sort of participated. And so a lot of people also know my work from, you know, visiting the studio at various points in time. Uh, so. H- have you always been, um, a sculptor? Um, uh, you know, I, that's, that's a, that's a tough question because if you go all the way back, like elementary school, um, uh, I have some really little sculptures that I was making wow. at a very young age. Wow, so, that's yeah, amazing. Uh, I've, uh, Long sort of standing fascination with little plastic people, action figures. I have a pretty substantial action figure collection, which I don't usually tell people about. But <laughs> um, well, we're certainly uh, we're certainly a fan of the arts here. Um, we um, I, I certainly have an appreciation for sculpture. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite artists is the artist Tom Sachs. So mm-hmm. a little bit about. Um, mm-hmm. What's going on? And um, so, so how did you become? So we heard a little bit about how you became involved in the fabrication through through more of a need. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us about the int- about the intro into museum design course that that was developing well, part collaboration. Of, part of you know when when we my initial sort of impulse was to just get my sculpture students involved and. Uh, um, Realize that I have a curriculum in sculpture that uh, that needs to be followed. That's a, a set of certain things. So um, the f- first year, or this past summer, what we offered was uh, or came up with a course uh, called Introduction to Museum Fabrication, and that course is a was run as a special topics course. Um, you know, with the idea that it would focus on these specific skills, and it would be people who had probably already taken sculpture, had taken um, both of our three dim- uh, our three D design courses, um, and would be coming in and would be looking for an additional advanced studio class. Um, and so the people that most of the people that that took the class, you know, fell into that category. So they came in with a skill set already, um, and this was a an opportunity to, you know, present uh, practical. Um, you know, uh, practical uses for sculpture besides just uh, individual expression or you know making your own artwork, um, but to do something specific with guidelines, uh, problem solving, etc. I've I've um, in in um, I've certainly been over to the Children's Museum to take some photos, mm-hmm. and so I, I've been a, around a little bit of the process, and um, that that's something that I've heard you stress before about um, about this this very practical use of um, almost like a almost like an education and being commissioned to some mm-hmm. extent like is, is that something that there's a, there's a component of that um, as uh, somebody who's been in, an art educator for uh, a number of years now um, it's constantly amazing to me how many students um, have a reluctance to study the fine arts to study three-dimensional design sculpture etc because of this idea that they're going to be a starving artist um, and uh, I didn't get into art because I wanted to starve uh, that was not the intention of anyway. <laughs> you know, I think that most people that I know go into art because they want to be successful um, and you have to have a set of 
uh, a set of skills in order to do that. And one of the things um, that a lot of uh, people who do three-dimensional art, um, they work as fabricators and do other types of, uh, of things uh, in order to support their art. Sure. Whether it's, um, you know, you know, helping out or assisting someone else with their sculpture or working in a fabrication uh, facility or something like it's that. It's great. It's great. Just yeah. experience. I just wanted to interject there also. What excited me about this, this course is that in time we're going to need to employ uh, one or two or more uh, in-house fabricators, you know, down the road. Um, so I thought this was really <laughs> exciting, um, you know, to think about the prospects of, you know, in terms of uh, economic growth, in terms of uh, creating jobs that we're going to need people trained, um, you know, just in these kinds of uh, craft, you know, so uh, that's another component. I think that's a really important piece to add because there's so many people who think a community college shouldn't be doing stuff like this, that arts and and music and that's sort of the soft stuff that you're, is not really workforce development, but your point, is, yeah. your point and Eric, your point is that there, this is a profession that can support you can support yourself on. It's a real job. It's a real lifestyle choice. So that's something that for any of those practical people out there, I mean, certainly I am not one to say that you shouldn't study art for the art's sake. I mean, I think that's a fabulous way to do it. But for anybody who believes that uh, community college should not have something like this. This just puts that to the lie. So when we come back, uh, we're going to talk with Eric a little bit about himself and his work at the college, and we'll bring in the students about their experience, and you'll be back uh, with On Course at Bristol Community College in a mo- moment. Thank you. Welcome back to On Course with Bristol Community College. Add to that, too, that um, the the things that are taught in a course like three-dimensional design or museum fabrication, in this instance, um, are beyond just individual expression. It's, these are problem-solving skills. Sure. These, are the, these are the skills that you hear people constantly talking about in terms of the 21st century worker um, that, that people need, the ability to think through problems, to be presented with things, and come up with unique and original solutions. Um, and where do you learn that? You learn that in a class like this. So, um, Eric, are, are any other colleges or doing anything like this, or is or um, not? Not to my knowledge. Wow. Um, this was a you know you know this was a special topics course that we originally ran. Um, you know, I think there's considerable merit to it, um, and maybe sure. some other people will uh, will look into that. But this is some of these things are things that might be folded into uh, into sculpture programs in, in other institutions. So. Um, what what were some of the challenges? And certainly, anyone can answer this. Um, what what were some of the challenges of fabricating such an imaginative space? Um, <laughs> Not everybody at once, yeah. but <laughs> well, <laughs> um, probably the uh, the first thing, and uh, this is this is something that I think artists um, uh, of all types can relate to: uh, the blank canvas effect. That you walk into a room, and um, I'm going to put in a shameless plug right now. But uh, if people are interested in checking out pictures of uh, of the museum and the fabrication of it, uh, we have a BCC Museum Fabrication Facebook page uh, that has a lot of documentation and shows that whole process. Oh, certainly. Uh, what What's the address? Uh, I guess you would go to Facebook and just look up BCC, BCC Muse- museum, museum Fabrication. fabrication. Yeah, uh, and, and we're planning on putting some of those on the uh, On Course Facebook page uh, so people can go right now to those and then link to that. Oh, very good. But um, you can see in on that page, if you look through some of the photos, you can see what we were originally presented sure. with. And I remember bringing in <laughs> uh, the first group of folks uh, that... that you know, and, and saying, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to make all of this amazing stuff in here. And you could see people looking around. It's a big empty room with nothing in it and a fireplace. Well, I mean, even <laughs> well, I mean, even when I visited the space to to take some of the early right. um, progress photos, that uh-huh. I mean, it was literally just sheets of fiberglass uh-huh. and uh-huh. chicken wire. Uh-huh. Yeah. So seeing what everyone has uh-huh. been able to create has uh-huh. really been. I can see that blank canvas effect <laughs> yeah. Yeah. firsthand. <laughs> I think uh, you know. I think once um. There, there are different parts of any project that you're working on when uh, you, you sort of uh, 
you're on a plateau and then you go to the next level. Um, and there were certain points when the, the room, we kept going into it and it looked the same and it looked the same. And then all of a sudden one day it was different. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, we do a bunch of things and it keeps staying the same for <laughs> several weeks or, right. or, and then all of a sudden it's different again. Sure. Um, and that, that keeps you moving forward. Oh, of course. So. Um, Eric, how has, how is, you know, instructing and collaborating on such a large project um, di- different from, you know, your own personal work as a sculptor? Well, I think um, this, is, again, I'm going to sort of uh, speak to my ideas of the 21st century, uh, the 21st century artist in this case. Um, I think that a lot of uh, of artwork today is becoming more collaborative. I do, sure. uh, I collaborate with a few other groups in different ways, um, and I think that that's a model sort of looking forward. Um, you know, the idea of the, you know, when I'm, when I do my own personal sculpture, I am the lone sculptor in my studio and whatnot, but, um, and, and I think there's something to be said for that, but, uh, I think that, you know, that sort of, uh, that sort of myth is just, you know, one sort of piece of it. I think that a lot of artists work collaboratively. Um, the bigger the project gets, which a lot of 21st century art projects are much larger than, than, than things have been in the past, the more people need to be involved. And, you know, it's not always just one individual who's doing all the creating. Why don't we, why don't we shift gears, gears a little bit and, um, start bringing on our students? And we are here talking about a very collaborative and wonderful project that's taking place in Fall River. Uh, the Fall River Children's Museum is open and in its own space and because of the uh, vision and the interaction of uh, the people who are leading the museum and our own faculty, we've had a great opportunity to give students a chance to do real work in a professional setting. And we're going to talk to those students right now. We have uh, Kelly Gagnon who is a art student at the college. Kelly? Hi. Kelly, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm a fine arts major at BCC. I'm from Swansea. This is my uh, my third year. I'll be finishing this spring in 2013. Um, I have been taking a lot of sculpture classes, also painting as well, a little bit of everything, and figuring out what I want to do with my art, but I've been very passionate about the museum and sculpture in general, so... And we have Jennifer Moore. Jennifer, tell us a little bit, bit about yourself. Just lean into that microphone there. Hello, my name's Jennifer. Um, I am from East Providence, and I go to school at BCC for the Fine Arts Program. Um, and I've always been interested in the arts. Um, it's always been something I've wanted to do, and um, working in the museum has really opened up a lot of possibilities for me. So tell us what happened. You get this opportunity. You hear from Eric who you know well. You've taken a number of courses from him. What did he tell you? Basically, I think we were, I think it was our figure sculpture class last semester, I think when he brought it up to us um, about the opportunity, and he basically just said that, you know, it's one of those things where you don't know when you're ever going to get a chance to do something like this again, and, you know, you want to be a part of something that's so exciting and, you know, uh, I guess like rare, I guess, for something to come across, especially in a community college. So uh, it was just something I didn't want to miss out on as far as the learning and the experience and just the excitement of, you know, what it is and for children, so. Yeah, it was definitely an opportunity to apply the skills that um, we've been learning in, in classroom settings and, and see how it works in the community and working with others. So did you expect that it would be what it was? Tell us what it was. Um, it awesome. Was- <laughs> Yeah, I definitely got to challenge myself, and I got to uh, to learn about different like different tools and different materials and things I never really thought I could do. I mean, I never thought of myself as being like you know tough kind of sculptor, and I you know found myself using big you know saws, cutting wood, and you know uh, doing different welding and all different kinds of things that I just never thought I would do, and building these big structures and rock walls and uh, just really like stuff that I felt to be impressive, I guess, for myself. So it was definitely a personal challenge. How about you, Jennifer? Um, it. It definitely had a lot to do with knowledge of materials for me. Um, I really uh, enjoyed the introduction to those materials and to see what um, those things could do to build these structural el- elements. Um, I think, like Kelly said, like building a rock wall was definitely one of the highlights for me. Um, and it's it's led to um, 
to an internship for me working at the steel yard in Providence, um, okay. which I don't think I would have Fantastic. ever thought to be a possibility without having taken a course like this. So it was uh, an awesome experience. What do you take away from it? Certainly you've talked a little bit about materials and an internship. Those are good things. Are you in the right field? Are you studying the right things? I think so. I think um, the biggest, like what I really take away the most is just um, learning how to transform an environment and really create a space. And I find myself going to different, you know, restaurants or cafes now and thinking like, oh, I could really transform this space and mm-hmm. like make things more exciting. And, you know, just, just the whole element of walking into a, a room and, you know, feeling like you're somewhere that you're you're not, you know, just a different land, dinosaur land in this case. <laughs> and I, I think, too, what it also um, provided was, um, and I think Eric spoke uh, about this, about the idea of collaboration. It, it was a chance to really work with classmates and and really focus on problem-solving skills and figure out, um, you know, how to build such a thing and to work with other people. So can you give me an estimate as to how much time you spent doing this? Because it was a summer course, and it is March, and you guys just finished. So how much time did this take you? Well, a lot. I mean, um, there are two semesters worth of it, um, and on top of that, volunteer. A lot of our time was volunteer um, outside of the classroom. Yeah, we get together at least once a week, sometimes twice, especially towards the end to try to get everything finished up. But uh, we'd spend mostly like the full day. Friday, we'd start like 9 a.m. and go as you know as long as we could, basically, until we, uh, you know, yeah, we're done with what we were doing. Most days were like six to eight hours. Yeah, we usually didn't want to go home a lot of the yeah. time. <laughs> it's it's funny too because it even though it's a collaborative uh, project, it becomes very personal, mm. um, and it's one of those things where. You know, to be a part of a community project and really just can't wait to see kids interacting in the space to see how they work with what we've built um, is really exciting. Jennifer, was it you? I think it was you the day that a child opened the door. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Can you tell it? <laughs> I was um, installing flooring into the dino pit that um, is an area where children are going to be able to pretend like they're they're digging for bones, um, and the room is adjacent to um, or connects to the Lego room, um, which there's not supposed to be access into while we're working on it. And a child um, opened the door and, and poked his head in and saw this rock climbing wall, and like under his breath, it was like, "Wow, is that a rock climbing wall?" <laughs> and just sounded so excited, and it was such a great moment. And you know, then the mother ushered him out, and was like, "You're not supposed to be in here." But yeah, that was a really good moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was one of, one of the staff. It was somebody she knew, and she gave them a peek. But Jennifer had to come out, and you know, a little while later, tell me, and just seeing the excitement in her face, it was just a, a great moment. <laughs> well, and art is really about. It's certainly it's about yourself, but it's also about your audience. Mm -hmm. And it's also about how it speaks to your audience. And it sounds like that small little focus group of audience thought it was pretty awesome. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Before they've even seen the room, like I'll hear kids in the hallway when I was there last weekend, they just see that there's a dinosaur room, and you hear them go, oh, a dinosaur room! And like they're so excited before they've even seen it. So <laughs> it's like the anticipation of knowing like what they're going to feel like when they walk in. And it's like, I just want to be a fly on the wall and just watch them play. <laughs> So, Joanne, when are people going to be able to see this fabulous room? Yes, well, next Wednesday, March 6th. <laughs> are you right, Eric? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the correct answer, either way. Um, the, um, the flooring, uh, the final uh, flooring uh, is uh, being laid uh, tomorrow, uh, in, and over the weekend it will be finished. And um, so, um, uh, if I may add, um, Bay Coast Bank um, is naming the room, and President Nick Christ will be joining us um, on Wednesday at 11 a.m. We're going to have a press conference at that time. But we begin being opened five days a week starting March 6th. We'll be open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturdays 10 to 4, and Sundays 12 to 4. 
giving us Monday and Tuesday for construction. <laughs> we can still do quiet things behind the walls. Eric would come in on Saturday morning and he, he could read my face and he'd say, I promise we'll be quiet. We'll do quiet things today. <laughs> So it's that whole balancing act of, you know, trying to keep the progress and, and finish other rooms, but yet be respectful to um, our visitors that are coming to enjoy what is finished. Kevin, you're going to talk to our guests about next steps for the museum, as well as for the learning opportunities our students will have. Well, I'm I'm so excited about um, everything that's happened. I'm um I love Legos as well, so that's that's coming in a second, a close second to the dinosaur climbing room. So, Joanne, how can how can people get involved, um, either to support the museum or even just to be to enjoy the museum? Sure, sure. Uh, well, we have a web, uh, cmgfr.org, um, and that's just been updated, and you can get some of our information. We also have a Facebook page, the Children's Museum of Greater Fall River, and you can see postings of various activities. For instance, this Saturday. We'll be celebrating Dr. Seuss's birthday, and I'll be cooking green eggs and ham from 10 to 11 a.m. Uh, if anybody cares to join us, uh, we'll be doing some crafts and readings of Seuss's books throughout the day. We are looking for volunteers now that we're open five days a week with a very small staff. We're looking for volunteers uh, to come and, and work with us on a, on a daily basis. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers behind the scene. Uh, this morning I was there with uh, two of our great volunteers, um, Art and Lisa Paswell, were a couple that came forward just from seeing the same meeting Eric was at uh, with the uh, architect last year. We had a little thing, a little blurb saying, if you're a volunteer, come out. And this couple, I call them Mr. and Mrs. Fix-It. They come out on a weekly basis, and they've done some incredible things for us. Um, so if you have, you know, a, a a craft or a talent or, you know, some way that you could, um, you know, somehow enhance our fabrication or give of yourself in some way, we'd love to hear from you. Um, it, Let me just give out the phone number, too, 508-672-0033. And if anyone has any questions or would like some more information, uh, please post to our uh, Facebook at facebook.com backslash BCC, and we will uh, get you connected to some more information. Um can I, uh, in terms of other ways people can get involved uh, on the BCC side, um, we will be running Museum Fabrication again this summer. Oh, okay, so, great. Uh, it's, it's listed as Art 160, so students who might be interested. Um, the prereqs for the co- course are 3D design um, or uh, instructor permission. So, you know, depending uh, if people want to come talk to me, um, but especially all those fine art students out there that... Uh, um, you know, you should absolutely take the course and whatnot. Is that open to alumni as well? <laughs> <laughs> you guys fall under the volunteer category. <laughs> <laughs> Mentors. <laughs> yes. yes. So, Student leaders. So uh, for all the work it was, uh, it sounds like it was way over and above the credits you got for it. Okay. Is it worth doing? Tell Tell our listeners whether it's worth doing or not. It definitely was. I mean, I didn't really need the credit to graduate. I really just did it for the experience, and it was definitely worth it. And especially when it opens, it's going to be like the final cherry on top, you know. So it was cer- certainly worth all my effort, yeah. Yeah, it was way, way more than I expected it would be. And, and I think it really gives an artist uh, or a aspiring artist the chance to see that they can do something with their craft and what they're passionate about. Eric, I understand there's a second, a second phase of the, the dino room that's going to happen this summer. Well, in, in terms of the curriculum of the course um, and what we're going to be taking on, uh, there was a Jeep that we were going to be building, um, so the, the new class will be working on uh, fabricating those particular elements as well as um, uh, working on some design uh, some designs for future projects. So those that this next group coming in will have the opportunity to to design the next room, which I think is going to have something to do with space. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much to our guests, to Kelly Gagnon, to Jennifer Moore, to Eric Durand, and to Joanne Spraga for being with us today. Uh, this is a very exciting collaboration between the college and the museum. Uh, I think that while it's called a children's museum and I have no children, 
that are young enough to appreciate a museum. I myself enjoy the space very much. It's it's just a very energizing space. And my son also volunteered last summer to paint walls, so I have a piece of that myself. So thank you so much, and please uh, join us next week. Uh, when Kevin, what are we talking about for our next show? We will be bringing on uh, Professor James Corvin uh, to speak about some of the great, uh, g- the, the greenest activities at Bristol Community College, the Seeds of Sustainability events. Thank you, and have a great week.